Despite doing everything but stand on its head to persuade Tory rebels to fall into line, the government was this evening defeated in a Commons vote on an amendment to the Maastricht Bill. My own opposition to this treaty has been known for a very long time. I remember telling the Chief Whip uh, years ago that wild horses wouldn't drag me into the lobbies for any more of, of this European nonsense. What we're saying to the government is there's more of this in store unless they look for a solution, and there is a solution. All we want is a referendum to let the people decide if the government agree to a referendum, the rebellion is over, they can get the bill through very quickly indeed, and there'll be no more trouble. Britain's future is inextricably linked with Europe, that to get the best out of Europe, we must make the most of our strength and influence within Europe. We believe that in principle, British membership of a successful single currency would be beneficial to Britain and to Europe. If you want to have freedom, which is necessary, you've got to fight for it. James Goldsmith, Sir James Goldsmith, who founded the referendum party, arriving looking extremely cheerful at Putney. But none of them, none of the parties, have a mandate from this election to take us into a federal Europe because they have all campaigned against it. What started as a murmur in the pubs and clubs and wherever people congregate in this country is now beginning to reach a crescendo roar. And what people are saying is get Britain out. You have the charisma of a damp rag and the appearance of a low-grade bank clerk. And the question that I want to ask, the question that I want to ask, that we're all going to ask is, who are you? I've never heard of you. Nobody in Europe had ever heard of you. I would like to ask you, President, who voted for you? And what mechanism? Oh, I know democracy is not popular with you lot. We're going to get the biggest turnout in the European elections we've seen since 1979. So the answer is increasingly, yes, they do matter. And people realise that Europe, whether you like it or not, is really, really important. A political earthquake may sound like hyperbole, but however you describe it, victory for a party without an MP or a council leader is unprecedented. We will give the British people a referendum. It will be an in-out referendum. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Now, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance for us to take back control of this country. Can you hear me at the back? Yes! Yeah! a dream that the dawn is breaking on an independent United Kingdom. And Sky News is projecting that the UK has voted out. The UK electorate has taken the historic decision to withdraw from the European Union after more than 40 years of membership. I do not think it would be right for me to try to be the captain that steers our country to its next destination. Brexit means Brexit, and we are going to make a success of it. We will leave, and we'll leave on the 29th of March, 2019. 29th of March, 29th of March, the 29th of March, the 29th of March, 29th of March, 29th of March, the 29th of March. Good evening. Today is Judgment Day. May's Brexit deal and her premiership hang by the flimsiest of threads. To London to stop the Brexit betrayal. I fear that the betrayal that we've seen over today's date will probably be repeated on the 12th of April. If that means we have to fight the European elections, let me tell you, I will fight them. <laughs> Speaking as a voter, I have to say I've voted for both the main parties throughout my life. I'm very apolitical. I vote for the party that I think will do the best job in the next four or five years. I wouldn't touch either of you with a barge pole. I'm not at all sure about your lot either. People are up to there with you lot. They really are. Um, you, and you see what's happening with Farage. What a comeback. Y'all ready for this? I did actually, rather stupidly, for a moment, believe that we'd won. 
Nigel Farage's Brexit party, first out of the blocks, campaigning for Euro elections on the day we were once supposed to leave Europe. A new party for the familiar face. Nigel Farage jubilant as his Brexit party bagged 29 seats in the European elections. <laughs> Didn't we?
please welcome to the stage, Richard Tice. Hello! Hello, Westminster! Hello, Brexiteers! Are we going to have fun tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Is anyone excited? We're here at the home, Parliament Square, the mother of all democracies. And we're looking forward just under an hour and a half's time before, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We leave the European Union. Now, we've got an action-packed program this evening, including lots of audience participation with some patriotic songs. Because, of course, we're all Democrats. And the big winner here, ladies and gentlemen, let's remember, is democracy. It's democracy that prevailed over the establishment. It's democracy that prevailed over big business and project fear. It's democracy that prevailed over much of the mainstream media. So democracy is the big winner, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got to be honest, it's taken a while, hasn't it? Three and a half years. But we're here now. We've all got joyous recollections during that period. For me, the big moment was on referendum night. As the results came in, the Sunderland roar. That was the moment. My second big recollection, when I knew Brexit was definitely going to happen, we just didn't know when, was when the Brexit party won the European election. Now, we can look forward with hope, with ambition, with enthusiasm, with excitement to a brand new future as an independent, sovereign, proud, and above all, confident nation. And confidence is a massively important thing. And what better way to kick off this evening's program with a confidence, huge rendition of Land of Hope and Glory from everyone. So, so I want you to give a massive welcome to the stage because I can't sing, let me tell you. So we've got three fantastic singers Please give a huge welcome to one of our MEPs, Belinda De Lucy, Inaya Falarin Iman, and a young Brexiteer, Shanti. Give him a big round of applause. Here they come.
Wow. Thank you very much. We've got much more of the singers later. But now, ladies and gentlemen, a lady who needs little introduction. And when I talk about the word confidence, this lady has got confidence written all over her face. She's had a varied career. She started off as a politician. She then realized that actually there were much more important things in life. Maybe she thought she should be a celebrity dancer. But then her real calling was when she phoned up Nigel and said, I need to come and join the Brexit party. She's a wonderful woman, an incredibly tireless worker. Please give a huge, huge welcome, Anne Winnicombe. And Mrs. von der Leyen says that there's going to have to be a level playing field. There will be no level playing field. We will be free to decide how we trade, what our laws are how we control our borders, and the fact that tomorrow we will wake up in a free country. Yeah. is due to the Brexit party. Yeah. Because it was the Brexit party that beginning last May, when we were the largest party in the entire European Parliament, it was, it was we who began to get us out of the morass into which we had sunk. And if we hadn't done that, we would still be there. So we can take huge pride. And look at you all here today. You've come from all corners of the country. From Sunderland, from Barnsley, from Wales, and somewhere here are my colleagues from Plymouth. And our strength lies in the fact that there are so many people, quiet people, ordinary people, people who don't want to be politicians, but who do want to live in a free country and who see nothing wrong with patriotism. So I think that we can all congratulate every single one of us. Of course, mainly it has been the doing of Nigel Farage. I had enough after seven months. He's been doing it for 25 years. So, ladies and gentlemen, Tomorrow we will wake up in a free country with a glorious future and we can be confident, dash it, we're the world's fifth largest economy. 
We don't need anybody to prop us up or to tell us what to do. And of course, we want to cooperate and to have good relations. But there is a difference between a sovereign state and a super state. And we will never be part of their super state. So thank you. Thank every single one of you here for what you've done. Now today, let us rejoice in the day that the Brexit party made. Well done, Anne. Isn't she great? Give a massive thank you to Anne Winnicombe. She is amazing. Tireless energy. Hugely important figure. As is our next speaker. From the world of celebrity dance, we move swiftly to the pub. Because, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, he's the largest publican in the country. He's a fantastic businessman, a great entrepreneur, an example to us all. And again, he's worked tirelessly through the last few years to battle for the cause of Brexit. And it's not easy for someone running a big business, but he's took on the rest of the multinationals. He's an absolute star. Please give a huge, huge welcome, Mr. Tim Martin. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. It's been a fantastic effort by everyone here. It's been a fantastic effort by millions of people at home. I want to say as well, fantastic by Nigel Richard and the Brexit Party. I want to mention a couple of other people because it was a very broad church. Kate Hoey. And Frank Field did a fantastic job in the Labour Party. Jacob Rees-Mogg. And Marc Francois. Steve Baker. A lot of economists for free trade. Quite a few academics were brave enough to go against the trend. Robert Toombs, Noel Malcolm, and a few others. They did very, very well. But most of all, thank you to you all here. It's been fantastic. I've just got a couple of little messages. I want to give a message to our European, the European people. This was not a vote against them. This was a vote against the EU institutions. The people of Europe are our friends and allies. I just want to say as well, we don't want to forget, a lot of Europeans have legally come to this country and worked very hard and made a very great contribution. So thanks to them as well. I just want to say to our Remainer uh, colleagues and civilians, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, we are magnanimous in victory. And our message to our Remainer friends is, let's stay friends. We had a good debate, but now we have to plow on. I want to just say two things. One is, we did understand what we voted for. And the second thing I'd like to say, ladies and gentlemen, is the vote for Brexit was a vote for democracy. It wasn't a vote for xenophobia. It's very important to realize it. A couple of other, uh, a couple of other points uh, that I'm going to go. But the big worry I have at the moment is a lot of people are saying, we must have a deal. 
That's very, very dangerous, because if you think you must have a deal, you can end up signing a long document with a lot of traps in it. When America became independent from us and became a massive success, were they worried about signing a trade agreement at the Boston Tea Party? No! Were the Australians and Singaporeans worried about a deal when they became independent? No. All these countries have become great success as a result of democracy. Our message to Boris and everyone else involved is please don't tie us up in a 500-page deal that only the Attorney General can understand. Oh, I've done it for tonight. I've brought a deal here. And the deal is this. It's one sentence. We, dear Michelle Barnier, we agree to trade with you without tariffs. And that's it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Appreciate all your work. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Isn't it great? The one and only, the true, Tim Martin. Thank you very much, Tim, as always. Now, we love a bit of audience participation. We love some songs. And there is, of course, one song in particular by a very, very special singer. Some of you may have already guessed. His name starts with D. And D stands for Dominic. I wonder if the other Dominic is listening in number 10. But please, ladies and gentlemen, give a huge, massive, raucous welcome, the one and only Mr. Dominic Frisbee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my band, the Gilets Jaunes. This first song is about how there are two sides to everything. They said he's a misogynist, a liar and a cheat, an alt-right sexual predator, uncontrolled and indiscreet of colluding with the enemy and treason he's accused of sexual misconduct of distributing fake news a lying narcissistic national threat yet maybe donald trump is not all bad i know the very thought will make you mad but Markets are up, taxes are down, he's talking to North Korea. Dealt with Iran, doesn't like Sadiq Khan. Is there really all... Is there really all that to fear? Maybe Donald Trump is not all bad. said that the world over it is trusted and admired truthful and impartial and at times even inspired its many finest moments oh so fondly we recall this cherished national treasure that is loved by one and all it educated it informed it entertained all the same maybe we should rethink the bbc why do we need state supply tv it's oh so pious and riddled with bias could its programs be any blander don't watch it you say you've still gotta pay for this statist propaganda 
Why should the license fee be mandatory? They said she was a strategist of judgment sound and true, experienced and competent, consistent through and through. Though lacking in charisma, she is forceful and refined. A strong and stable leader for these dark and dangerous times. This shrewd operator has it so well planned. On the other hand, thank the Lord Theresa May has gone. Christ, she just went on and on and on. Her Brexit's insane, incompetence reigns, it's chaos unabated. Never said what she thinks about anything, it's like she's automated. Thank the Lord Theresa May has gone. Ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our second song of the night. And this is a song I think you all know. However, we have a slight problem. This song involves a lot of industrial language. And I've been told that I'm not allowed to swear on this stage. <laughs> That would be a public order offence and I don't want to get in it and I don't want to land Richard in it. So I have replaced the key word, ladies and gentlemen, with the word fudge. <laughs> However, if you want to sing the key word, that is your decision and not mine. <laughs> and I doubt they'll arrest 50,000 of you. This song, ladies and gentlemen, is all about Brexit. <laughs> On the 21st of June in 2016, <laughs> the people of the United Kingdom and Gibraltar went to vote on an issue that for some had been burning for years. The question in full and unaltered was, and I quote, should the United Kingdom remain a member of the European Union or leave? the European Union. It was the greatest democratic turnout in British history. I do not scoff. And when the time came to speak, the British said, Fudge off. Fudge off. Campaigning had gone on for many a month With debate and discussion on many a front They'd argued, they thought they had smeared and pulled stunts There was David Cameron, Theresa May, George Osborne, Tony Blair, John Major and the BBC The British told them to far job 17 million far jobs if you vote to leave, you'll lose your job. If you vote to leave, you'll lose your home. The ensuing recession will last for years. Said David Cameron, Theresa May, George Osborne, and the Treasury, Tony Blair, John Major, the BBC, the Bank of England, Mark Carney, the EU, the IMF, loads of... The US President, St. Obama, back at the queue. 
Loads of celebrities, Gary Lineker, J.K. Rowling, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, Lord Adonis. Who the fudge's he anyway? The British told them to fudge off. 17 million fudge jobs. They called in the experts to tell us what's right. They gave us the benefit of their foresight. To leave is calamitous, that's definite. Food shortages, planes grounded, no medicine, a house price crash, half a million jobs lost, cost of £4,300 to every home, riots, stock market collapse, no sandwiches. <laughs> There'd be an outbreak of super gonorrhea. They seriously said that. <laughs> Donald Tusk at the EU said it would be the end of Western civilization as we know it. And one more thing, if you vote to leave, that makes you racist. The British told them to fudge off. 17 million fudge jobs. A general election was finally called. I think you know where we told them to go. We won't need to hear from them ever again. From who? I've got a list. <laughs> From Tony Blair, John Major, John Burko. I can't tell you how much pleasure it gives me to say that. <laughs> Joe Swinson, lol. <laughs> All those MPs who switch parties without holding a by-election. Chukaru Mana, Sarah Wollaston, Anna Subri. Not a Nazi. <laughs> All the MPs who did the opposite of what they promised in their manifestos. Dominic Grieve, David Cork, Philip Hammond, Oliver Letwin, Ed Vasey. Thank you. <laughs> All those patronising Labour MPs who know so much better than you. Emily Thornberry, <laughs> Diane Abbott, Jess, Jess Phillips, Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, bless. Um, that weird one with glasses, long surname. Um, <coughs> Hilary Benn. Hilary's a girl's name. What the fuck's that all? What the hell what the, is that all about? <laughs> the Civil Service, the Bank of England, um, the EU, the IMF, half of Hackney, uh, <laughs> Giva Hofstad. Emmanuel Macron, the Commentariat, Jolly on Moron, Andrew Marr, Femi Weirdo, Aaron Bastani, Gina Miller, all the celebrities, Hugh Grant, Gary Lineker, Lily Allen, Steve Coogan, Nish Kumar, Lord Adonis. Who oh, the fudge is he anyway? <laughs> the British told you to fudge off. 17 million for jobs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dominic. Give him a big round of applause and his band. Fantastic. Well, that warmed us up, didn't it? So now, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is quite unique because he's been battling to leave the European Union since 1975. Our John Mills, he was part of the campaign. He led the campaign in 75 to leave the common market. So he's got a bit of experience about this. And that's why it's so wonderful that the, the chairman of Labour Leave who's been battling so hard, utterly committed to this cause. He was also chairman of Vote Leave. He's here with us this evening. Give a massive welcome, John Mills. Well, thank you very much, Richard. And I think you may have seen me looking about 45 years younger in a film a little bit earlier on. Still handsome, John. 
And I was there in 1975. I was in charge of all the administration. So I've been at it for a long time. And why was I against the common market in 1975? I'll tell you. I thought that food prices were going to go up. And what happened? Up they went. I thought we would do badly on trade and that they would sell more to us than we sold to them. And what happened? Exactly that. I thought we'd be paying in more to their budget than we were getting out, more than was fair. And what happened? Exactly that. I thought they were going to have the common agricultural policy nobody in this country wanted. And what happened then? They had that. I think they don't, right at the last minute, they betrayed the fishing industry completely. So I had a lot of reasons in 1975 for being pretty skeptical about whether our membership was a good idea. That's why I fought against it. But I was still there. I was still there when the 2016 referendum came along. And I think the arguments that I had in 1975 were still just as apposite. Plus, by that time, we had a European army in prospect. We had the Eurozone crippling the country, especially Greece and Italy doing very poorly, Spain not doing very well, loads of unemployment. And then also we had immigration, which wasn't an issue in 1975, but certainly was when we got to 2016. So today's a great day. What we've done, despite all the obstacles we had, everything the Remainers did is we've got through to live in the European Union. But my message to you is this. Don't be too overconfident that we've won the war. We've won a really important battle, but there's a long way to go. Because if we're not very careful, we'll find a whole lot more people want to lock us into the single market They'll want to lock us into the customs union. They'll want us half in and half out. And my message to you this evening is this. If we're going to come out of the European Union at all, we've got to do it properly. We've got to come out of all these institutions. We've got to trade with the EU like everybody else in the world does, without all the political stuff that gets in the way. So my message to you this evening is stand fast. Don't let them take it away from us. Make sure that we finish it all off and come out. And I think we can. I think we can, and I think that will leave Britain in a wonderful position for the rest of the history. So stand by together. God bless you all. Well done, John. Thank you, John. Isn't he a star? He's fought so hard and battled, and today is partly thanks to the likes of John Mills. It's time for everyone to sing again, isn't it? What about Royal Britannia? Anyone like singing Royal Britannia? Well, let's have a go. So let's invite the ladies back onto the stage with our band for that wonderful patriotic song that we all know and love so well. Here we are. Here they come, give them a huge welcome, Belinda, Anaya, and Shanti. <laughs>
Thank you. Fantastic. Aren't they great? Give them a huge round of applause. And now, we've had business people, we've had celebrities from the world of media. We're not interested in some of the radio channels except one. There's a very special person who's brilliant on talk radio. She gets up very early and she entertains us with considered comments, always very thoughtful. Please give a massive, massive welcome the one and only Julia Hartley Brewer. the work boys um it's great to be here what can i say um it's great to be here with you tonight to celebrate this incredible moment in our nation's history there's been a lot of talk today about how we brexiteers shouldn't be triumphalist how we shouldn't celebrate too much or too openly how we mustn't gloat or rub Ramona's noses in it. But you know what? Gathering here tonight isn't gloating. It's not rubbing people's noses in it. We shouldn't have to hide away in a dark corner as if Brexit was something to apologize for or to be embarrassed about. We aren't ashamed to be Brexiteers or to be British. Lots of people today saying they're ashamed to be British. Indeed, some of us are proud to fly our flag. Some of us are even proud enough to wear it. It, it was a bit more Old Spice than Ginger Spice. I've got another dress on underneath. Just saying. Um, look, we have been a nation divided since 2016, but it didn't have to be that way. And we can end all of that division tonight at 11 p.m. Now is the time for us to all come together. Now, whether you voted for Brexit, which I have a funny feeling quite a lot of us did, or whether you didn't vote for Brexit, whether you love Brexit or whether you hate Brexit, that doesn't matter anymore. All we ask of you, however you voted, is that you accept the democratic mandate for Brexit to happen. And tonight, we hold out, as Brexiteers, the hand of friendship to you and to ask you to join us in celebrating tonight. Because tonight isn't just about Brexit. It isn't about leaving the EU. It's about celebrating our democracy. Because when 11 p.m. comes, that isn't the end of Brexit. It's just the start. It's the start, though, of something wonderful. The rebirth of our democracy, the kick-starting of our economy, a new optimism, a new self-belief, a new vision for a 21st century Britain as a proud, independent nation-state once again. We're going to forge new friendships and alliances with countries around the globe. And yes, just across the channel, too. <laughs> Don't boo. And now, for me, I've got to say, today has been a mixture of joy, relief, and pride. Joy that we can, at last, control our own destiny. Relief that we finally, after all those battles, we got here today. <laughs> and pride, so much pride, that the British people stood firm in the face of everything that's been thrown in them. 
they thought they could scare us into voting the right way. They thought they could insult us into changing our minds. Did we flinch? No, we did not. They also thought that they could, well, they could convince us, they could scare us. They thought they could fool us into accepting a pretend Brexit in name only. They thought they could trick us into a second referendum, offering a choice between remain and remain light. Were we fooled? They thought we could use the courts and every single trick in the parliamentary rulebook to try to overturn the referendum result. But did we give up? No. We stood firm. We refused to believe their lies. We refused to take no for an answer. We refused to be ignored. Today, more than three and a half years after our votes were counted in June 2016, our voices have finally been heard. And we will never be silenced again. There are so many amazing people who made this day happen. Not just the household names like Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, but 17.4 million people in households up and down the country. You, me, everyone here, lots of people watching. And those people, no matter what was thrown at them, never lost their faith. They never stopped believing that democracy would triumph in the end. I, tonight, I've never been prouder to be a Brexiteer, and I've never been prouder to be British. Happy Brexit Day, everyone. Thank you, Julia. Isn't she wonderful? Whoa! Julia Hartley Brewer, thank you very much indeed. We've only half an hour left, ladies and gentlemen, before the big moment. But please now, again, from the, she's, she's a businesswoman and from the world of media. She works for the Pledge for Sky TV. Please give a huge welcome, Michelle Dubry. today, apparently, tonight was going to be a damp squib, apparently, people were not going to turn out, but turn out you have. Many of you have been standing here in the freezing cold and the pouring rain, so well done you. The 31st of January 2020. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a significant moment in history. And as a Brexiteer, it was a moment that I never actually thought at some point was gonna happen. Because fighting for this moment has taken courage, it's taken strength, and it's taken resilience. Because us Brexiteers, we have been called names we have been dismissed, we have been undermined, and we have been criticized. And tonight, we come together, we finally have got our wish, which is to stay in Europe, but to leave the EU. And we did it! We did it! And as you look around the Parliament Square, you'll see some statues. And among them, you will see leaders, previous leaders of countries from, believe it or not, outside of the EU. We've got places like India, US, the South Africa, and it's a timely reminder that there is a world outside of the EU. And in that world is a world of opportunity. And after 11 o'clock tonight, there will be no such thing as leavers and remainers. Because after 11 o'clock tonight, we are all leavers. Yes, we are. 
And I will keep this very simple. And I think we should end on a nice note with a three cheers to our future of opportunity, to our freedom, and to the fact that democracy prevailed. So let's have three cheers to leaving the EU and our future. Hip hip! Yeah. Hip hip! Yeah. And one last one, hip hip! Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is not about those people in that building over there. It is not about the elites. It is not about the establishment. It is about you guys and the 17.4 million people that fly their flags and celebrate our independence and our freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. What, what a fantastic, fantastic speech. Uplifting, positive, enthusiastic. And our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, he's also fought for decades to leave the European Union. He was often a lone figure in the House of Commons. During the referendum campaign, he created and ran the group Grassroots Out. He's without question got the brightest, most garish tie in the House of Commons. Please give a massive welcome, Mr. Peter Bone, MP. Wow! What a wow, what a wonderful evening. In less than an hour, we're going to leave the European Union super state. I've been waiting 30 years for this. The establishment wanted to keep us in a costly, undemocratic and wasteful federal Europe. Two million people from the EU came and lived and stayed in this country whether we wanted them or not. We gave the European Union more than 211 billion pounds. And what did we get in return for it? Nothing! But tonight, we end the free movement of people. We stop paying the European Union billions and billions of pounds each and every year. We will make our own laws in our own country judged by our own judges. Tonight, we take our country back. But can I for a moment just take you back to December 2015? At that time, the establishment said we must stay in Europe. David Cameron and the government said we must stay in Europe. The Labour Party said we must stay in Europe. And of course, the BBC said we must stay in Europe. Tom Perslove, the MP for Corby, Councillor Helen Harrison and myself thought, we British people want to leave. Let's have a grassroots campaign to get us out. And that's how we formed GO. And we met a whole lot of extraordinary people during that campaign who agreed to put their political differences to one side. We had the great... Kate Hoey from Labour, the superb <laughs> Grand Stringer from Labour. We had the embolument Sammy Wilson from the Deep UP. We had the vocal Ian Paisley. We had 50 supportive Conservative MPs, including David Davis, Liam Fox, and Jacob Rees Mogg. <laughs> but we had one other person. We had the legendary Nigel Farage. And I tell you that no single person has done more for Brexit than Nigel Farage. As Tom and I and Helen toured the country, we went to England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and even Gibraltar. And when we went to the meetings, People took thousands and thousands of Go leaflets to deliver. They organized street stalls. 
They organise canvassing. And it's true that people like Kate, Sammy, myself, Helen, Tom, helped to deliver Brexit, and of course Nigel. But the real people who I'm so, so very grateful for and to were the individuals who from those grassroots out meetings went out and campaigned to deliver Brexit. I believe what they did made the difference between winning and losing that referendum. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we leave the European Union. And tonight we should celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, and thank you for everything that you've done. The hour is approaching, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get there, we've just got the Brexit All-Stars Band to entertain you before our final speaker, the one and only Nigel. The Brexit All-Stars. One, two. It's an unusual to be loved by anyone. Come on, people. It's an unusual to have fun with anyone. But when I see you hanging apart with anyone, it's not unusual to see me cry. I wanna die. Hey! It's not unusual to be mad with anyone. But when I see you holding the power, it's such a crime. You should ever want to be loved by anyone. It's not unusual. It happens every day. No matter what they say, you'll find it happens all the time. Two mics, here we go.
indeed. Well, not long now, ladies and gentlemen. There's about 16 minutes, 15 minutes. You head off. And of course, there's one person we've not yet heard from. I wonder who that is. He is, of course, the person who's fought the longest for this great cause. Over 25 years. He's had all sorts of abuse and vitriol and challenges. But his determination, his courage, his enthusiasm knows no bounds. It's been a huge privilege for me to work with him so closely for the last 18 months. And my word, we've had some ups and some exciting times and one or two challenges. But we've prevailed because without Nigel, as we all know, there would have been no referendum. Without Nigel, there would have been no Brexit. And without Nigel, there would have been no Brexit party. He's here now. He's with us. Give him a massive, massive welcome. He's a little bit shy sometimes, you know. Do we want Nigel? I can't hear you. Do we want Nigel? Here he is, the one and only, Mr. Nigel Farage. time, something truly remarkable is going to happen. Something that I've fought for for 27 years. And something that many thousands of you gave your time, love and money for. We faced an establishment that never even wanted to listen to us an establishment that never wanted that referendum to take place, an establishment that has tried for three and a half years to frustrate the will of the greatest democratic mandate ever seen in this country. But in 13 minutes' time, we will leave the European Union! And we did it! We did it! 
We've transformed the landscape of our country. And there are some that say we shouldn't celebrate tonight. Well, we are going to celebrate tonight. And we are celebrating tonight because we know that this is the single most important moment in the modern history of our great nation. That is what is happening tonight. And I think there's a lot to celebrate, don't you? The first thing to celebrate is that we will no longer have to listen to Mr. Juncker. To Mr. Guy Verhofstadt. No longer will our Prime Ministers be talked down to by unelected bureaucrats in Brussels. We should celebrate the fact that we are going to be able, across the road here, to make our own laws by people we can hold directly accountable in general elections. We, we, in 11 minutes, become a democratic, self-governing, independent, and I hope, proud nation. And we should celebrate, we should celebrate that in 10 minutes time, we're getting there, aren't we? Three and a half years was a long time. 10 minutes doesn't sound too bad to me. We should celebrate the fact that freed from the constraints of the European Union, we once again will be able to find our place in the world. We are able to re-engage with the Commonwealth, with America, with our friends all over the world. It will be a global Britain. Global Britain. But there's one thing above all that we must celebrate tonight, and it's this. The only reason we're here tonight is because Westminster became utterly detached from ordinary people in this country. And those people started to speak. Those people started to rise. Those people forced a referendum. Those people forced a general election. And those people, despite all the flaws in our system, for the first time in history, the people have beaten the establishment, and that we must celebrate. The real winner tonight, the real winner tonight is democracy. Democracy has won tonight. And I, as somebody who believes that we should be pro-Europe, pro, pro but not pro the European Union, I believe we've now set an example for our friends right across the continent. I want a Europe of free, sovereign, democratic nations, and we'll trade with them, we'll work with them, we'll cooperate with them, we'll have reciprocity, but we will not take orders from them. Uh, come on, I'm shy. I'm shy. I'm shy, but thank you. So we've got a lot to celebrate and a lot to look forward to. Now, I know there are big battles to come. I know there are people here concerned what happens with fisheries. People here concerned with whether the European Court of Justice will have a say in the future. People concerned about regulatory alignment. People are concerned about whether we could be betrayed again. But remember this. Remember this. What happens now 
in eight minutes' time. What happens in eight minutes' time marks the point of no return. Once we have left, we are never, ever going back. And important though the rest of it is, the rest, in a sense, becomes detail. We will be free, we will be sovereign, we will be proud, we will be independent. We've won a very great victory. And you know, an amazing thing has happened today. Tony Blair. Ah, but I'm going to surprise you. I really am going to surprise you. Tony Blair has said today, there is no point looking back. We've made a decision. We are leaving the European Union and we must work together to make it a success. How about that? How about that? A crowd of Brexiteers cheer Tony Blair. How about that? Because what is happening is our country is now uniting. Our country is coming together. Nearly everybody, even Lord Mandelson this morning, accepted this is happening. There are some, of course, who struggle. This is the new 50p coin. And Lord Adonis, Lord Adonis, who, as somebody said earlier, who is he anyway? Lord Adonis says he won't use the new 50p coin, but you know what? People like him now look like members of the Flat Earth Society. The fact is, the fact is that the war is over. We have won! And now we have, and now we have in Boris Johnson, a charismatic Prime Minister who is saying all of the right things. All of the right things. I never believed I would ever see a Conservative Prime Minister say any of the right things. But he's saying all of the right things. And in many ways, our hopes and our trust are now bound up with what Boris Johnson does. We want him to keep to his promises. We want him to make us free. And I promise you that I and all of you will keep him, won't we? We will keep him to his promises. Who knows? I think there's a good chance he'll deliver. I think the Conservative Party learned a lesson in those European elections they never, ever want to repeat. So let us be optimistic. Let us think about the future of our great nation. Let us think about the example that we are giving to the rest of Europe and the free world as well. Let us celebrate tonight as we've never done before, you and all of us have made history and this is the greatest moment in the modern history of our great nation. Thank you.
Less than a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Are you feeling good? Have you had fun? Twenty-seven. Fantastic. We couldn't have done this without you. Thank you, thank you so much indeed. Believe it or not, we're no longer a member of the European Union. And with that, and with that, I bid you a very good evening, a safe trip home, and a fantastic, wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. Guys, we can get you guys off. Go, if we can get off that way, that'd be great. <laughs> 